Hey, this is James. And this is Chris. This is your Data Drop News for Friday, June 11th, 2021. President Biden has issued a new executive order that bars Americans from investing in Chinese firms that have been linked to the country's military or are engaging in selling surveillance technology used to repress political dissenters or religious minorities in China. The order lists 59 firms and intensifies the ongoing commercial and ideological battle between Beijing and Washington, one that Mr. Biden has termed the struggle between autocracy and democracy. Over the past year, COVID-19 and social distancing restrictions have forced companies to explore more rapid transformations into digital services. Now, it appears that cybercrime rates have kept pace right along with them. From January 2020 through December 2020, malware detections rose by 565% and spyware app detections grew by 1,055%. That's according to the 2020 Malwarebytes State of Malware report. Ransomware attacks and other malicious software are taking advantage of the shift to remote work, which too often results in hasty changes that leave valuable data exposed. For example, many of the recent attacks have come from malware sites posing as video conferencing domains like Zoom, while others exploit unencrypted or poorly protected data that was created as part of hasty efforts to move systems online. The recent uptick in major U.S. cyber attacks, including ransomware attacks on the Colonial Pipeline, healthcare providers, and Walmart, has prompted the Biden administration to issue a new executive order aimed at protecting the nation's cybersecurity networks. The order requires IT service providers who have contracts with the federal government to share information about cyber incidents. It also seeks to move the federal government towards safer computer networks, secure cloud services, encryption, and multi-factor authentication within the next six months. Experts warn that businesses in the private sector must move to meet or exceed the new measures being taken by the federal government. Will Colorado become the third U.S. state to enact a new data privacy law? The Colorado State Senate has unanimously passed a new consumer data privacy bill which would grant GDPR-like protections to its residents if signed into law by Governor Jared Polis. Even then, the law wouldn't take effect until July 2023. Colorado is just one of 26 U.S. states currently considering data privacy laws. 14 of those states, including Colorado, are basing their consumer privacy laws on the more business-friendly framework adopted by Virginia, rather than the stricter set of rules used by California. Key differences between the two laws include whether or not an individual can sue a company over the misuse of data and what exceptions are made for certain companies. Ashkan Sultani, the former chief technologist for the Federal Trade Commission and a co-author of the California Consumer Protection Act said, industry gets 50 attempts to get what they want and they have the resources and knowledge and access to try to promote weaker bills in each of these states. The ultimate aim is to try to weaken a national standard. Of course, a federal bill in the United States would override any state level protections, but congressional inaction is what opened the door for states to set their own parameters around data privacy privacy in the first place. New York City has passed new data privacy legislation that specifically targets owners of multifamily dwellings. The Tenant Data Privacy Act addresses perceived privacy issues surrounding the use of smart access systems in multi-unit housing, such as key cards and phone-based entry systems. The legislation requires landlords to provide tenants with a privacy notice, obtain consent for data collection, and set strict timelines around the retention of doorway data, among other protections. The law goes into effect soon, but it grants landlords an 18-month grace period for existing units to come into compliance. The UK government wants to extract the general practice history of every patient in England by the 1st of July. While the National Health Service says this will improve the collection of patient information and allow for better planning of healthcare services, it also raises concerns that some portion of these sensitive medical details could be sold to third parties. This data in question covers the most private details of a person's life, including mental health episodes, smoking and drinking habits, diagnosis of diseases, and other intimate information that can easily be weaponized by unscrupulous companies or bad actors. And now, Drop Shots, your bite-sized data news roundup. The Philippines are considering increasing the punishments for data privacy violations, with increased fines and up to 7 years imprisonment per violation. It's now been 10 years since the UN declared internet access to be a human right, so why not make data privacy a human right as well? 
Marketing expert Philip Kushmaro recently made just this argument in Forbes.com. Check out the post for this episode to get the link to the full editorial. Awareness of personal data privacy is growing. That's according to a new survey by the personal data management company Invisibly, which indicates that less than a third of consumers are unaware that companies routinely profit off of their data. And finally, European investigations into whether Amazon and Microsoft's cloud-based services infringe EU privacy rules have once again shone a spotlight on how and when the United States and the European Union intend to come up with a new privacy shield policy. The Data Drop News is a production of the Data Collaboration Alliance, a nonprofit working to advance data ownership through pilot projects in sustainability, healthcare, education, and social inclusion. Listen to the Data Drop on our website at datacollaboration.org, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.